And the producer of the documentary, Abigail Hirsch, joins us at the Roundtable this week. Nice to have you. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. Why did you decide to make this documentary? Wow. Well, uh, it was an inspiration. I attended the Montreal um, International Yiddish Theater Festival. It was a 10-day festival of Yiddish theater, Yiddish film, Yiddish concerts. And I was so floored by the content that I was totally inspired to do this documentary. That was about five or six years ago, I believe, that the first uh, one held in Montreal. Yes, 2009 was the first one, 2011 the second. And w many of our viewers are familiar with that. Dora Wasserman, who is a friend of Mountain Lake PBS, oh, uh, yes. uh, and her family and her daughter Bryna, mm -hmm. uh, the driving mm -hmm. forces behind that uh, that festival. That's right. And in fact, Bryna is part of the documentary. Yes, well, well, she is featured. She is one of the three principal characters, and all three of the characters were at the Montreal International Film Theater Festival, and so um, it was a delight to discover the whole uh, experience of the Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theater mm -hmm. and to record the um, history of the Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theater and how Bryna has kind of grown up with it. And now, of course, she's a professional Yiddish theater promoter and um, still very active in the Yiddish theater world. For a little bit of the history, uh, before the Second World War, Yiddish was very common. It, it was the language spoken by millions of Jewish people. Yes, it was. Yiddish was the native language of the Jewish people for a thousand years. Uh, it grew out of, it was, uh, it's kind of a German dialect uh, interspersed with, with uh, French and Slavic words and also Hebrew words. Hmm. And it's written in Hebrew characters. So, um, it was a language that was spoken in the home, and it was also a language for all Jews who lived in Europe. It was their shared language, and which grew up over a thousand years. And after the Holocaust, uh, so many people who spoke Yiddish perished. Perished. They were annihilated. Perished. Yes. And. Is that where the decline began, that, that after the Holocaust there uh, uh, so well, many people died? That, it, uh, had, it had started before because a lot of the Jews uh, with emancipation became secularized and were speaking English and French mm. and German languages. But uh, of course the, the Holocaust was a death knell for Yiddish, especially since in Israel uh, Hebrew became the dominant language, so even survivors who came with Yiddish were discouraged from speaking Yiddish, and Yiddish was totally discouraged in Israel. Hmm. And this is part of the story as well. Are the languages similar? In, in Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. And this is a very interesting piece as well. Yiddish has, like I said, a German base, mm -hmm. and Hebrew is its own language, but Hebrew was not a spoken language until um, until about a hundred years ago. Hmm. It was, it was uh, a, a language of um, the, t the Torah, the Hebrew texts. The Bible is in Hebrew. Um, and it was studied and, and learned, but it was not a spoken, it w you know, we wouldn't speak to each other in Hebrew. Although now, of course, that's all changed. With one or two generations speaking Hebrew, was it primarily grandparents and the older generation that would still speak Yiddish? Did they? Yes, of course. Uh, the grandparents would speak Yiddish, and but they were so discouraged from speaking Yiddish. I met uh, when I was filming. I met one of the children of one of these people at an in, at a meeting, and he said to me, "I came just to hear Yiddish." He said, "When I was a boy and I was walking in the street, it was all right if my mother spoke Yiddish in the home, but God forbid she would say something to me in Yiddish in the street." Mm -hmm. You know, it was really like that. It was kept alive, and, and one of the ways it was kept alive was through theater. At first yes. in Israel, and then right. as we saw here in Montreal. The, uh, yes, you know, Yiddish theater was very big before the war. Uh, there was uh, Yiddish theater on Broadway, Second Avenue, and uh, apparently the Yiddish theaters would copy the English theater. Hmm. And then as soon as they did it on 2nd Avenue, they would send it up to Montreal 
because there was uh, Yiddish was the third most popular language in Montreal before the war, mm -hmm. before the Holocaust. Uh, after the Holocaust, of course, it has faded in favor of Hebrew. Is it fair to say that it was almost on the verge of extinction? Did it, did, 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 were that few people speaking it and, and, uh, and um, uh, embracing the culture? Well, I would say yes. I would say yes. Uh, it, has, uh, it has been on the verge of extinction. However, in more recent years, it, there's been a tremendous revival and a, man, a tremendous awareness of the literature that was written in Yiddish, the plays, and uh, that all comes to life through the theater. So many people have come forward saying we need to preserve this. Yes. Your documentary showcases three of, three. of these individual yes. activists, if you That's will. Right. Uh, Bryna right. Wasserman is one, yes. and she obviously is doing that, carrying on her, her mother's uh, Yiddish theater. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, Shmuel Atzmon is the, one, the other one who um, is uh, an Israeli actor who, uh, of course, knew Yiddish from his growing up in Poland, mm. but he came to, to Israel as an 18-year-old and uh, became totally integrated into the Hebrew theater. And it was only at the age of 50 that he, decide, he went back to Yiddish and, and started the Yiddish Peel Theater which has really become very popular now. And then you also uh, tell the story through the eyes of, 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 a, Milena. of a Milena, who was a student yes. of dance and jazz yes. and opera. She had an amazing background as a young woman studying opera, jazz, dance, and uh, she had never really thought about Yiddish. And then someone asked her to sing something in Yiddish and, and, and the doors opened up for her Ooh. and she began learning Yiddish and she created her own one-woman cabaret for the International Yiddish Theatre Festival, <laughs> which was amazing. And that's where I met her and, and she is the third character in my documentary as she represents the younger generation. Her grandparents were Holocaust survivors. Yes, uh, her grandparents on her mother's side. Her grandparents on her father's side are from the Sephardi part of the uh, Jewish world. So she has both, both aspects. But being younger, had she gone many years without hearing Yiddish spoken well, in the home? Well, she only heard it from her grandfather. Hmm. She heard it from her grandfather, and that was it. Why the importance in preserving this? Well, um, that's a good question, and I myself didn't realize how important it was, would be to preserve this until I attended the International Yiddish Theater Festival. Um, I think, you know, the, um, there's a tremendous amount of culture that's mixed in with any language, just like the French people. They're very intent on preserving French because their language is embedded mm -hmm. in their, that culture. Their culture is embedded in that language. And it's the same thing with Yiddish. It's, you lose so much if you don't understand Yiddish because the intonations, the, um, and, and the tremendous literature that's based on the Yiddish culture, you can't really get it in translation. So that's why it's, it's really valuable to learn Yiddish. And when you talk about the French preserving their language yes. and culture, that, that's very important to the people of Quebec, as we've, oh, uh, as we've of seen. Of course, uh, and, and I appreciate how important it is. You know, I, I understand it so much better having had this experience with Yiddish. And for the Jewish people now doing yes. the same thing for a number of years that's with, right. with uh, the Yiddish language mm -hmm. and culture as well. Mm -hmm. You have screened your documentary at a number of uh, international film festivals. And yes, uh, yes we have. It was picked for the New York City International Festival and also was screened at the Montreal World Film Festival in September. And uh, that was very exciting. On this side of the border, yes. uh, in New York City, yes. a huge uh, Jewish population there, much the same as, as, as their uh, as the Yiddish language and, and culture have faded over the yes, over? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, but again, there are institutions that are starting to revive Yiddish, preserve Yiddish. There's the Yiddish Book Center, and uh, that collects old books that would have been thrown out and presents Yiddish programming. 
And uh, there's a place called Yiddish Farm that was uh, started by a couple of young people to, they, they grow organic vegetables and they have an immersion Yiddish program for young people, anybody who wants to come actually. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and in Montreal, are there efforts as well other than the, the, the activism and the yes. work done by the three uh, Absolutely. folks that you? Absolutely, there are uh, performers uh, who try to promote the Yiddish and really advance the Yiddish, um, you know, creating new works in Yiddish. And uh, there's an institution called Klez Canada which is a summer camp that happens every year in the Laurentians for one week. And all kinds of, all people, many people who are interested in Yiddish come there and they take classes, they perform together. It's a wonderful meeting place. Uh, probably uh, people of our generation go to that camp, but do you also see kids and, oh, and, and, and a new generation learning it and appreciating it? It's three it? generations. People oh. come with their families. Uh, young people come from Europe from all over, and it's really amazing. And that sounds uh, fascinating. If folks want to learn more about this, this the camp in the Laurentians, uh, yes. you have a few clips. Uh, yes, actually, I attended Class Canada, and I have some clips on my YouTube channel, Ask Abigail Productions YouTube. They can see the clips that I've taken there. And that's also your website. Uh, folks can read up more on yes, this by going there. Yes, my website is uh, askabigailproductions.com. Fantastic. Abigail Hirsch, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. Oh, thank you so much.